Hi, I'm Sandy with Lightning Tools, and I'm back again with Brett for another episode of <laughs> Lightning Data Viewer. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, we, we, we're kind of doing the data viewer to death at the moment, but uh, oh, I, I, I don't know about a, that. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of things to talk about with the data viewer. So, yeah, we, we realized we hadn't really touched on connecting to uh, uh, external uh, data um, through the graph connectors too mm -hmm. much. So, uh, yes, that's a, a topic that we we want to introduce. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I guess first of all, you, Sandy, over to you. You're, you're the power platform expert. <laughs> so, um, what can you connect to using a Microsoft Graph external connector? Uh, well, there are, well, so just to step back a little bit as to what that is, the, the graph connectors are something that you can set up in your M365 admin center to connect to external data. And it's really designed for search in Microsoft 365. So you'll, that's where you'll find it under the search and intelligence. So I think we're going to look at that. Um, but uh, there are some that are built in, some connectors. So for example, uh, connecting to on-prem SQL, um, Oracle, I believe is there, um, Salesforce, Jira, and a couple other things um, that you can use set up right in there, but you can also create your own external graph connector. And as we saw last time with the data viewer, you can connect directly in the data viewer to things like SQL Azure and OData service, but the external graph connector that's built into Microsoft 365 just opens up a whole nother world <laughs> of things that you can connect to and display your data in the data viewer. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's probably worth just pointing out before we get into the data viewer itself where that is configured. So um, what you'll notice is uh, inside the admin center uh, here. Uh, so of course you, you do need to be a, uh, a Microsoft 365 uh, administrator, right. uh, but then you'll be able to get into the search and intelligence section underneath settings. And it's through here, you'll notice there's a, a data sources tab at the very top, and um, it will show you some of the different uh, data sources that I've already connected to. Uh, so if you wanted to create uh, a, a new connection, um, then you can absolutely uh, do that from here. Um, so we just hit add and uh, you'll notice that we can then see some of the different data sources that you know, it, it's possible to connect to. So uh, as you mentioned, there's things like um, SQL Azure, which the data viewer could connect to directly anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also um, things like Oracle on-premises, uh, or you could also connect to, to SQL on-premises uh, mm -hmm. over here. So we notice how that's 2008 or later. Um, we have file shares. Uh, there's also things like ServiceNow and Jira and Salesforce. And I think like the that. file shares also... might be new. I don't remember that one. <laughs> I think there's a few that have crept in mm. here, actually, yeah, <laughs> since the last time I looked. Um, but it's also possible, you know, if, if what you don't, oh, sorry, what, if, if what you want to connect to is not in here, then you can create a custom connector as well. Mm. Um, uh, so and I like... Sorry, I like that's the website one too. Uh, that's pretty cool. You can like we've connected to our own website, and then you basically can create like a, a repository, you know, show things that are on your FAQ page or different things like that. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's really really useful. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, just just picking on um, one of these, if we were, uh, for instance, to go to, uh, to to the SQL Azure and, uh, and and select next, you'll see how you. Can, basically get walked through and of course every single one is going to be different uh, we've got the, uh, the, the the name uh, display name uh, there's a notice that you can go through and uh, and accept and um, yet yeah, these are the uh, the steps that you go through in order to be able to complete that connection so um, so once we get to the database settings is where you're going to put in your server the database name uh, credentials and, and so on and then of course you'll you'll go through and, and select the, the schema uh, that you want to work with, uh, et cetera. So that's where we can go through and configure one. And we've already got, uh, as you saw, some already configured. Uh, so we're, we've got one called Jira Demo, which we're going to be working with. Um, so that's just indexed uh, 305 different items. And we want to display those now inside the data viewer. Hmm. So, uh, so we'll go to the data viewer. And uh, in here, we'll add a new web part at the bottom. So let's just first of all put the page into edit mode. and add a new instance of the data viewer here uh, to the bottom of the page and we'll hit configure. So in the data source provider, this is where we can go through and select the Microsoft graph connectors. And, uh, and if we choose that, 
uh, we can then select whether we want a grid view or a chart view. So I'm going to start off actually with a grid view, but then we will mm -hmm. create a chart as well. Um, so we'll select the grid view and the data source. All you need to do when you're using an external graph connector, since the configuration has already been done, uh, we just need to go through and select the configuration that we want to work with. So I'm going to go with this Jira demo. Um, we can create query strings and um, item limits and things like that. I'm just going to leave the defaults there and uh, we'll go through to the columns tab. So in here, you've got um, well the name of the connector, which is just going to say Jira demo all the mm -hmm. way down our grid view. Uh, but we do have things like title, uh, which uh, I'll just drag up to the top there because I want that to be my, my first column. Uh, we have the reporter name. Uh, we have the rank uh, as well. So I think it's rank of importance or something along those lines. Um, and then we've also got when it was uh, updated and also when it was created. So uh, I'm just going to put those two dates uh, next to each other like so. Uh, you could add calculator columns, you can add filters and say, set your uh, sort criteria. And then when we get to the display, um, you can also do some uh, data formatting as well. Uh, so things like the dates, you know, we could make these short dates mm -hmm. instead of long dates if the time that it was reported isn't that uh, interesting to us. Um, and there's also a number of other different uh, grid view settings so we can have sticky headers and set pagination and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, yeah, maybe we could set that to be uh, 30 uh, records mm -hmm. per page. Uh, so when we save that, that brings back uh, the data, uh, as you can see. And one of the nice things actually about the data viewer is you can also do some of the different um, conditional formatting and grouping uh, and so on within the grid view here. So if I was to take the reporter name, for example, um, I could come under the, uh, the column settings for that one and hit the group by uh, so now we can see everything that Julio reported and Lucina reported, Abina uh, and uh, and so on. Uh, so that's all uh, all set there in my grid view. And uh, we could also go in and add maybe some conditional formatting as well. Um, so uh, on the let's have a look at the updated date. Uh, so if I go and add a look, have, have some uh, conditional formatting to the updated date. I could say if this is greater than today minus 30 uh, so we can see what's been worked on within mm. the last 30 days and that uh, we could either set something like a, a pill color um, mm. or we've also got icons and things like that that we can set as well um, so I'll go with the uh, little eyelashes and we'll, we'll change the foreground color I'm going to go with the theme color actually mm. uh, just to make that stand out a little bit and uh, we'll save that and so now you can see anything that has been updated within the last 30 days uh, has the eyelashes and, and that's nice. just drawing our attention to that so we can mm -hmm. go through and have a look at what perhaps may have changed and, and so on. Um, so yeah let's just change the name of that one to, uh, to, to Jira Issues. Uh, so we're giving a, a view name to that one and uh, I'm going to clone that view um, well, that's a um, handy thing to know too that you can yeah. you know once you've made a connection and you've set up some things about it then you can even if you're trying to do something pretty different you can clone it so you don't have to do that part over again yeah exactly in fact what when you look at the data like this you might think well how many of these are actually you know occurring every month or are the, the number of issues reported going up or down and, mm -hmm. and so on um so that's exactly what we could do it within a chart i could clone the grid view uh, so I've got all the settings in place as to which columns I chose and um, you know, the, the connection itself and then when we get into the uh, configuration I can change it from grid view to chart view it will already have the data source set there to, to Jira and it's already got the columns that I selected as well uh, what we're going to do is just go down here to the display and change the column that we want to group on to um, when it was created perhaps could of course do updated if we wanted to uh, we can group by that so now you can see uh yeah the, the number of issues um in fact that's doing a sum which i don't want to do i want to average uh, i want to count so count the number of issues mm -hmm. that have basically been created um so that was per year per quarter there we go so we've got our four quarters and uh, we can go through and format that as maybe a column and again pick up the theme color and uh, we've now got our, our chart. So we can flick between the grid view layout where we see the detail, uh, or we can change the chart view 
and uh, and, and see the the charted nice. uh, content. So yeah, uh, it's it's a great um, tool so that you can actually bring some of that on-premises data into SharePoint Online, mm -hmm. which prior to the external graph connectors, that was uh, quite a challenge. Yes. <laughs> so and that, that only came out about a year ago, I think, right? When the, they were first uh, made available. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, <laughs> yeah, there we go. Great feature. Well done, Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Well, well, thanks very much for showing us that. Yeah, no problem. And um, I think, you know, going into uh, into next month, in, into February, uh, we're uh, focusing on um, Social Squared, which is mm -hmm. one of our discussion uh, forum tools. So we're, we're going to be taking a look at that and um, we'll, we'll explore some of the different things that you can use Social Squared for. Great. All right. Sounds good. Thanks a lot. Yeah. All right. Take care, Sandy. You too. Bye. -bye. Bye.